Hey, UTV drivers, Kevin Ray here. We've got another rig for Trail 22 review. A special one today. The Polaris General XP 1000 Trailhead Edition. This is brand new for 2022 and we've got it. Okay, so what's special for this trailhead edition? You're getting things like the front bumper, the synthetic 4,500 pound winch, special Pro Armor 30 inch tires, the two tone interior, and this awesome bed rack system with a lock and ride. Nothing changes on the bed. It's still a hydraulic dump. It still has the 600 pound capacity. You just get the added benefit of a shelf and the Molly strap system. It's really cool. Up front, you get the LED 11 inch Pro Armor light bar, rear view mirror, LED lights all the way around. If we come down below, high clearance control arms, front and rear. And if I can sneak you in here, you get the Walker Evans Velocity Series adjustable suspension. Maybe we can see this side a little bit better. There you go. Front and rear. You can see the adjustments are done right here for the dampening. It's just compression, no rebound. And again, the high clearance control arms in the rear. This is a limited edition trailhead package that does come with a 3D embossed, and you can feel it, it's raised vinyl graphics. This is Topo from an actual trail in Arizona, just north of Phoenix. You get the metallic blue paint on the body, the rest of the body, which is very handsome in person. I don't know if it translates to the camera very well. It is matte and it does have a metallic flake in it. Inside, you're going to get things like ride command and a four speaker Rockford Fosgate sound system in the foot wells on each side and behind your head. Each speaker is about 50 watts, I believe. Um, and it's all controlled from the uh, infotainment ride command screen. All right, so enough chit chat. What do you say we go for a drive? Let's do it. Let's hit the trail. This is trail marker 22 at Wind Rock OHV Park in Oliver Springs, Tennessee. Same trail we always do. We're in the 2022 Polaris General XP1000 Trailhead Edition. It's got a 999cc engine, parallel twin Pro Star naturally aspirated. Polaris says it pumps out about 100 horsepower. I believe it. Throttle response is uh, pretty good. It's a little twitchy, but um, manageable. There are no modes to change it or tame it, they've found uh, a reasonable middle ground. Oh, it's sloppy today. We've had a lot of rain recently, so this video might be a little interesting. Jumping from the engine into the transmission. 
got the uh, normal PVT, which is a CVT Polaris owned CVT transmission. Found on all XP1000 models across the lineup. It comes with, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, comes with a um, transfer case that splits power all the way down to turf mode. So right now we're in turf mode, which is essentially one wheel drive. Uh, great for driving around the driveway, doing work around the yard. You're not gonna tear anything up. We'll swap it into four wheel drive. You get uh, two wheel drive after turf mode, which essentially locks the rear axle. And then four wheel drive on top of that. Four-wheel drive isn't really four-wheel drive. They call it all-wheel drive. Um, at any given point, you've got three tires turning. It tries to do traction control, and um, I'd say it succeeds. All right, so big hill. Put it in low. I don't feel like changing a belt. nice and sloppy today and I can feel the front end I'm trying to grab traction between the, the two tires in four wheel drive and what I mean by that is the steering will get stiff when they both try to lock up and grab at the same time big puddle garden our first one we'll climb it with ease these 30 inch pro armor tires do a fantastic job we've had them in uh, some, some Georgia hard pack this sloppy stuff Tennessee clay over and uh, they really don't disappoint these hill climbs are where the XP 1000 engine really shines you've got just tons of torque to make it up never left feeling like you could use a little more power. I'm going to crank the damping all the way down to soft because we had it on full hard while we were at the track last week sending it off Big jumps. And it's beating me to death. In case you're wondering, it really does make a difference when you go from one extreme of the clicker to the other. There's not a lot of finite detail in there, but Hard does make it harder, and soft does make it softer. All right, on our way. Let's go back into high gear. Pick up the pace. All right, so the general platform is a uh, sport rec rig. It's kind of like a crossover, dual sport, if you will. Um, it uh, doesn't really excel at anything. Uh, it's very similar to the Yamaha R-Max or the Can-Am Commander. It gives you the utility of a bed, the utility of a hitch receiver, but it still tries to incorporate the sport suspension of a pure sport machine. Hensing the Walker Evan Velocity shocks that are on this 
machine. It, it's, it's a perfect solution for the trails that we have in the east. Um, we're never seeing high speeds, but uh, you know we still need that articulation, that damping control, and that uh, total suspension travel to tackle obstacles in the trail. And I think it does a fantastic job. Um, both front and rear axles do have anti-sway bars on them, which did hurt this machine in the RTI test. But out here on the trail, it doesn't seem to really affect it. General seems very well made. The interior, the exterior, it all oozes a premium feel, and it better. This thing costs twenty-eight thousand, almost twenty-nine thousand um, dollars in its base form. You can bolt on factory accessories from there. Um, I don't think this unit came with any factory accessories from Polaris. I may be wrong. If I am, crucify me in the comments. I love to hear what you guys think. And I love to learn new things from the folks that own these rigs and know every bolt on them. We only get to keep them for maybe a week or two. I never have the time to become intimate with them. We spend just enough time in them to set a good baseline and learn how they feel on as many trails as we can get them on. But these aren't long-term test units. You know, we don't know how they'll perform in two years. That being said, the General is one of my favorite platforms. This is a two-seater, but you can get it in a four-seater, a true four-seater, and it still retains the utility bed in the back. It is a very long unit, but it gives you all the features of this rig with two more seats, and I, I really like that. Power steering is uh, just about perfect on this thing. It is, it is power assist. As you're hitting the bumps and going over the rocks, it's going to help limit that bump, that you know feedback in the steering wheel just a little bit. But you can still feel what's going on, no problem. Just helps limit fatigue. Most side by sides and UTVs have that now. That is one of the problems we've seen. I don't know if you guys caught that. But there's a rubber mat that hangs out in there and it, anytime you press the accelerator with a little bit of force, it just flies out. I don't know if it's supposed to be clipped in or not, but it's run out a few times. Let's get up here, find some rocks. I don't like going through the mud because I have to clean these. So I typically try to just go around. <laughs> oh, we've had some water intrusion. But 
There are nice big drain holes. That's probably why there was water intrusion. That being said, the half doors on this thing are great. It uh, really helps keep the mud outside and your body parts inside. The bucket seats are supremely bolstered. They're just ultra comfortable. I could sit in this thing all day, no problem. Comes with a three point seat belt like you would find in an automobile, but there are ways to upgrade it to a four point. I don't know why you would in a sport rec unit though. Okay, onward. Pick up the pace just a hair. See how this thing handles its speed. Tracks very straight. Point in direction. It'll go. This is not like a normal utility rig. With the sport style suspension, the high clearance control arms. You can pick up the pace quite a bit and it uh, just eats it up. Um, awkwardly, it does like to jump. It's very well mannered in the air, stays pretty flat. Unlike some of the other units we've tested that tend to nosedive, as long as you're on the throttle, unload that front suspension as you're hitting the lip of the jump like that it uh soars through the air all right rockfield really like the way this thing feels and in, in the rocks more technical trail it just kind of eats it up Steering wheel's a good size, and I just soaked my face. It's got nice thumb rests. They're soft, but still supportive. I like that this machine doesn't, it tends not to bottom out. I don't know if it's got damping that ramps up variable damping or variable coils or what, but compared to some other models with Fox suspension, it seems to limit bottom, bottoming out a little bit more than those. Let's climb over the rock. So this thing's got 13 and a half inches of ground clearance. And climbing over that rock, not even close. You've got the high clearance control arms, flat underbody, lots of skid plates, and the big 30 inch tires. All that culminates to uh, basically being able to drive over whatever you want. All right, here's our big rock crawling test. This one is unique in that not only is it technical, but it's also in a stream, which is questionably legal in, in the state that we're in. You gotta, you gotta drive slowly, try not to disturb the wildlife. But at the same time, it makes all the rocks wet. The general has no problem navigating it. All right, so General XP 1000 Trailhead. Laris states that it's a, uh, a dry weight. 1,801 pounds, which is pretty heavy for a UTV. 
On our scales, on the UTV driver scales, it weighed just a tick over that wet, 1,806 pounds. All that utility comes at the cost of more weight. But this is the perfect rig for extended trips out to the backcountry. It's got heaps of storage space, ways to attach things. It's a great drive line, powerful engine. If you're planning on multi day trips, you can't beat this thing. Oh, it's just eating up this wet muddy trail. No issues at all. Alright, so as far as the infotainment system goes, standard ride command, standard Polaris ride command. You get all your gauges, you get your GPS, you get your friend tracking system. You know, radio, everything that comes with Ride Command normally you get. And then the Trailhead Edition tacks on the Stage 3 Rockford Plus Gate sound system. And that means you're getting two speakers in the front foot wells, two speakers behind your head. Each speaker is a six and a half inch driver being pushed with 50 watts. It gets loud. It doesn't get crazy loud, like a big, massive sound bar will, but it stays clear and you can definitely hear your music over the relatively quiet engine exhaust. That was one of the things that we did not like about the Yamaha R-Max was how loud the engine was. Polaris has uh, nailed that down with the general. You can hear it. It tickles your eardrums, but it's not loud. And it won't leave your ears hurting at the end of the day like the RMX can do. All right, let's go back down to low. This has gotten a little crazy for Trail 22. I like it. All right, let's try that again. We'll take a slightly more left. It's situations like that when you're trying to hop up a, a rock step or navigate a, a boulder field that the sway bars really detract from the performance level of this machine. Uh, I think with better articulation, it wouldn't feel so squirrely. I'm used to being off camber, but for somebody brand new to be in that situation we were just in, I think it would detract from the trip a little bit. It would be scary. Getting close to the end of the trail. Just want to thank you for tuning in, watching our rides. I'm not going to say it's not fun because it's a lot 